Another thing that you need to know is the teeth. Um, you only need to know four things. So you have these ones right here, the ones right here, which have the little sharp edge. This is called the incisors. So these two ones are incisors. This one's right here. This one is called the canine. Then you have these ones. These are called premolars. And then these big ones right here, these three right here, these are called your molars. So next is that we're going to go over the slides of your stomach fundus and your, um, the duodenum of your small intestines. So this is the stomach fundus. This is a slide for the stomach fundus. First is the rugae. So now for the rugae, it is the individual folds that it's pointing to. So that's one individual fold. There's several, there's several other ones and they all together are the rugae. Next is the simple columnar epithelium, and the simple columnar epithelium is the outer layer, which are the outer layer of the rugae. The gastric pits are the spaces between the rugae. So the white space that you find between the rugae are called the gastric pits. Next is the mucosa. The mucosa is the layer that's going to be after the rugae so the layer at the base of that is the mucosa after the mucosa is the light layer is called the submucosa so the layer under the mucosa is the submucosa next is the muscularis the muscularis is under the submucosa and it has a lot of uh, look um, it has a lot of long strands on it the next is the serosa, and the serosa is a very, very thin one cell line at the base on the outside of the stomach. Next is the small intestine duodenum, and the first thing is the villi. So the villi are the things that stick out from the, from the other tissues. So the things that stick out are called the villi. Next is the simple columnar epithelium, and that's the layer at the base of the villi. That's the simple columnar epithelium. You have the goblet cells, which are the white circular um, areas where it has the white space in the middle. That's the goblet cells. You have the serosa again, which is the outside thin layer on the outside right next to the serosa you have the longitudinal muscular layer which is the darker colored one after the serosa the circular muscular layer is the one that's going to be before it's going to be right next to the longitudinal muscular layer, and it's a little bit lighter and not as compact as the longitudinal muscular layer I'm going to show you the mink and show you the digestive system. Alright, so first of course is the trachea. So this is the trachea right here. This one right here that has a little right here. Behind the trachea, it's this thing right here. This is the esophagus. It's the esophagus, which is behind the trachea. You have the tongue, which of course is in the mouth. So if, if you have... You have now, here, you have the stomach. So now this right here, this would be the stomach, it's kinda, here we go, here we go. This is the stomach because it has this big fat portion right here. So you have the cardiac portion. The cardiac portion is this area right here because this one would go up, and so it's near the heart. So this right here is the cardiac portion. You have the fundus, which is this fat part right here, so this would be the fundus. So cardiac portion, the fundus. You have the pyloric region, which is this one right here. This is the pyloric region, which is right before it goes into the small intestines. Then you have the greater curvature and the lesser curvature. So this is here, this is the greater curvature, and this would be the lesser curvature. All right. Now you have the small intestines. So the small intestines are a lot rounder than the large intestines. So a lot smaller and rounder. So then right here, these are examples of your small intestines. 
small, small intestines, small intestines. There's going to be clear differences, hopefully, between the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. So the duodenum is the one that comes right after the stomach. So this one right here, it's like a darker tint. So it's a lot darker. This is because when it goes to a different color change, so this right here, it gets a little bit lighter. Okay? See the color differences? It's, okay? So this right here would be the jejunum. Okay? After the jejunum, so it's, it's still light, it's still light colored, and it's still small. So you still need a small intestine. You need to go for a while. So it's jejunum, jejunum, jejunum. Then it gets a little bit darker. So this one gets a little bit darker. So now this is going to be the ilium. Okay? So this is the ilium. It's a little bit darker. So then it goes from really dark to very light to middle colored. So it's like a, a tint that's a little bit darker, but not as dark as the duodenum, as you can tell. Then what happens is that it's going to get flat and it's going to get um, bigger. And when that happens, see, like this is still, see, it's getting a little darker. That's still the ilium. Now, here, it's gonna get, now it's flat. This flat portion right here, this would be the large intestines. Okay? The, when it's flat, and you know, it's, you have all of this intestines that's right next to it. So then you know that, oh, this is gonna be the large intestines because it's flat, and some of them, they're, uh, in this guy, he has a pretty small large intestine, but sometimes there's a the big difference between the large intestines and the small intestines, okay? You have the rectum, so the rectum would be this portion right here before it exits, and then the exit on the other side, of course, is going to be the anus, all right? You're going to have the liver, so this is the liver. You have... The gallbladder, which is sometimes hard to find because sometimes it just looks like a little piece of um, tissue. But what happens, it's, kind of, it's closer to the front. So if, it, if you see something that comes off near the front, it's a little tiny little... That's not, that might be... Um, this guy might not have... This guy might have losses. It looks more like a like a droplet, like a little um, cream droplet that kind of kind of comes off of, or a little tiny sheet that comes off of the liver. So this guy, that will be the gallbladder. Mm -hmm. The pancreas, which is actually a lot easier to find than the gallbladder. So you know, the pancreas is connected to the duodenum. So you have the stomach, you have the duodenum. So this is the duodenum. And you see, if you see something that sticks out, so this right here, this would be the pancreas. Okay, so it connects, you can see it connects straight into, it's like a little brown and it's a lot, well, if you feel it, but you're not gonna be allowed to, to feel it in lab exam, but it's a lot uh, harder. It's a different consistency than the rest of the other mush around it. So this right here, and it's connects to the duodenum right here. So this right here would be the pancreas. And then you have the greater momentum. So this right here is the greater momentum. It got ripped and got went to the side. But this right here is the greater momentum. If I put it apart a little bit, you can see it's like a clear plastic like thing. Okay? So then this would be it would be like spread around. It'll cover all the intestines and it'll hold the hold it'll hold all the intestines together. Okay? So this would be the greater momentum. So usually in the lab, it's going to be off to the side maybe, or you're just going to see this little massive little blob thing. That's going to probably going to be the greater momentum. But as you know, it's always clear. It's just together, it looks kind of brownish, but when you spread it apart and it becomes that single layer, it becomes clear. Okay? And that is it for the mink. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>